Well, as far as Iran is concerned, there is a process which uh, uh, Dan was explaining a moment ago that uh, an election will be held to uh, come up with a new president within 50 days. Now, of course, we all know it's not a free, fair and open election, uh, as we would expect uh, here in the West. But there is a process in place. And I think that the Iranian regime, whatever the problems may be domestically with uh, calls from younger people for a more liberal environment, whatever they may be, the, re the regime remains strong enough that it will be able to engineer the kind of result uh, that will cement it in power uh, you know, for the foreseeable future. As far as the wider issues of Middle East tension are concerned, uh, again, I doubt it's going to have a significant impact. Uh, and it's certainly uh, not in Iran's interest to in any way attempt to portray this accident as being anything else. Uh, you referred earlier to the uh, Senator Schumer receiving intelligence advice that this is an accident and not any kind of uh, foul play. Uh, and it, it's not in Iran's interest to ratchet up the tensions in the Middle East any, any higher than they already are. Uh, there's still a power dynamic to, of, of course, come to the fore, though, Neil, within Iran itself, um, as it leads towards that uh, perhaps new leadership, as it were, right, especially an election that would be happening in 50 days or so at the very minimum. Um, does that mean that the power dynamic now completely shifts one way or the other? Well, we're, obviously, we'll have to see uh, how many candidates uh, are able to stand whether there is any way in which uh, a more liberal and possibly more popular candidate can stand. Uh, and obviously that's a process which will, uh, uh, which will unwrap in the next few days. Uh, but again, I think the underlying point is that the regime remains fundamentally strong. Uh, and uh, you know, I think it will be able to overcome this accident. And, uh, you know, it's not as if the Islamic regime is suddenly going to uh, fold its tents and disappear. And, uh, you know, the next 50 days will be very interesting. Of course, what will probably happen is if the regime uh, engineers the result that it uh, desires, we'll probably find that the turnout in the Iranian election will be very, very low, as indeed it was last time, because particularly younger people, more liberally uh, uh, minded, secular uh, Iranians, will not wish to participate in what they regard perhaps as a rigged election. Yeah. Um, Neil, you followed this market quite considerably then, whether it be in, within the IEA and uh, previously as well in other forms. And um, I mean, I know I'm probably going back a little bit here, but wanted to just uh, get your sense of, of who Ibrahim Raisi really was in the context of Iran, in the context of the oil market and in the context of leadership within the Middle East. Well, it is obviously he's a significant figure because if you're a leader of a country which is as big and powerful as Iran is, then you are a major player. But of course, Iran is, is, is striking a, a difficult balance because there are rising forces within the country for more liberalization. And of course, with sanctions against Iran uh, having been reimposed following the, the breakdown of the JCP uh, agreement, uh, Iran's economy is in a bad way. Inflation is very high, there are shortages within the country. And so the Iranian uh, regime has to find a way uh, of, uh, of keeping the economy uh, as strong as they can in very difficult circumstances, but also uh, pursuing uh, what is now a more aggressive foreign policy. And of course, we're seeing uh, with relation to the post-October 7th situation uh, with uh, the wider uh, uh, conflict or potential conflict in uh, in northern Israel and in Lebanon, that Iran is playing a very, very prominent role. But Iran plays a long game, and it is not in Iran's interest to allow itself to get into direct confrontation with the United States, or indeed direct confrontation with Israel on a big scale sufficient that you could call it a war. The reason for that is that Iran, of course, lives uh, on mainly on its oil revenues and its exports need to be maintained to keep the show on the road. So it's a difficult balance that the Iranian regime uh, strikes and Raisi has been a, a part of that process. But I think that uh, the election of a new leader, which will not be somebody that the West uh, instinctively feels is, a, is, a, is someone that they can really do business with, will show that the regime remains committed to its policies in the wider Middle East to expand its influence and, of course, to uh, uh, do what it can to support the Palestinians. 
meanwhile, they'll continue developing their economic, uh, sorry, their nuclear program as best they can. And of course, they have more freedom to do that now since the ending of the uh, of the nuclear agreement with the U.S. and other powers. 